It's time for another Dice Tower review with the Chief, Bart Brunchine. Hey, it's the Chief from the Dice Tower. We're going to be talking about Crosshairs Testing Grounds, a game from 1A Games, uh, the same guys who make Tide of Iron, if you can believe that. Um, this is uh, what they call a trail based game, it's a roll and move game. Uh, but they've added a few little twists to it, and I will admit that when I first heard about it, I was very intrigued. Um, this is a review copy. I, I contacted them when I first heard about it. Uh, I was uh, still doing Tide of Iron reviews, and I thought, what, what are they putting this out for? A roll and move game? Um, but let's go in, and we'll take a closer look, and then I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, an overview of the board. Uh, production values are great. Everything's very nice. Everything from the board to the cards. Um, four crosshairs. Imagine it's kind of like Watership Down. You're dealing with rabbits that are anthropomorphized, if I said that right. Um, and they've all got their own cool little uh, characters and backstory. It comes with like a little novella. Uh, you've got a uh, great little story in here that kind of goes through and really details everything out. Matter of fact, their little battle hymn song kind of freaked my uh, seven-year-old out. <laughs> but that was my fault. I didn't pre-read it. So, but a great little backstory. Um, it is a roll and move game. Let me moving along, literally rolling and moving, going through these different lands, which they've got segregated out by color and everything on the board real nice. And you're going to go all the way around, and your goal is to come back into this factory over here. So when you get to the factory, you roll a die, and whatever it lands on, you're going to go to the corresponding number. So one is fortune and glory. Basically, it gives you a bunch of flavor text and you win. Um, this one, if you don't uh, win whatever uh, the action is, then you're going to go back three spaces. Um, kind of similar here, similar here. Uh, too much power is you win, sort of, but you blow up the power core. You're vaporized. This whole little uh, town area or land is vaporized. But hey, you've stopped this evilness. And then you've got just another kind of battle thing that's going on here. So you get a little randomness here as well. The zone key will be the best way to show you the spots because as a roll and move game, when you land on these different kind of zones, that's what's going to trigger different things. I'm going to go show you the cards in a little bit, but I just want to say if you're in a blank zone, you just land there, nothing happens. If you land in this one that kind of looks like, I don't know, to me it's like rusty sand or maybe it's blood, you're going to draw a stronghold card. Those are going to be things that are going to help you. I'll go in and show you some more of those later. If you get this big splash of blood, this is an encounter, uh, a testing ground card. And again, I'll go in and show you those. This would give you one of those crosshair markers that's going to help you with your specialties. So you may be trying to land on one of those. Here you're going to acquire one of the little bags that's going to give you your rope or your tent or whatever your little... Um, normal items are. Let me scroll down. If you roll a research die, if you land on the spot with that, you're just going to roll this. Usually it's just going to give you like, here's one of your specialty items. Here's a normal regular item. Uh, this means you're going to flip over a different event card and I'll show you those. Those are like a persistent thing that can affect anybody because if you get this, you're going to activate that current event card. So this just causes a, a new one to be flipped if you get it. And then if I can find it, this is going to lend you or lead you on to an adventure that's going to correspond to whatever part of the, I don't know, path you're on. Now for the adventures, you have all these different cards that are going to correspond with different areas and every adventure is going to do something really completely different. Now they're all great art, very, very basic, but they're all uniquely different to the area that you're in. Um, I'll give you an example on this one. Let me again set it down. So if you go on an adventure in Bargola, it's going to have its flavor text. There's basically martial law has been declared in a town called Jono. And Bargola is now under complete, and I can't say it, a lot, loss row, whatever, control. Part of the flavor text that's in the readings. You're just going to simply use the challenge die, and you're going to move. You're going to just pick a marker of any kind. You're going to move around here and just gather or move whatever you get. So you're literally just marching around like in a little mini adventure. 
Uh, this one's generally pretty good to allow you to pick up like items and specialty markers and sometimes get cards. So you're going to go around. When you complete it, you're done. It's very fast. It's literally click, 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 get the stuff. Sometimes other players will get stuff based on what you did. You're done. Your little character stays on the map. So if I was here, he would stay there. You just come onto this board, grab a marker and do your thing. And they're all um, basic, different, simple, flavor, flavor, flavor. Game comes with a set of dice. This is your movement die. You literally roll this and move that many spaces. If you get the question mark, then you're gonna go ahead and roll the research die, which can give you the items, send you on an adventure, um, and the one I'm looking for, change the event card, which is up there. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And then this is just called the challenge die. It's just a regular D6. You use this for combat and any other time they tell you to roll a dice. So pretty straightforward, uh, very simple. Um, the dice quick so throughout the course of the game uh, you're going to have a chance to collect some of these little items that you see on here which is going to be displayed by these things here so if i had the rope i would go ahead and put that here and the rope's real good because you're going to have some cards that you're going to draw along the way that'll say dead ends and if you have the rope that card will have no effect on you so i won't go through every one of these but you can see you have like a shelter that keeps you uh, uh, it'll help you when you're out in the weather. You've got a raft, you've got a map. It's gonna help you move a little bit more. Then when you have these below specialties, you're gonna use more of this like a target symbol. Now the main difference here is these are gonna give me a bunch of weapon things that he can do. Now every character card has something a little bit different. But if you use an item that you have, you don't lose it. So if I have rope, I can use rope to move around on my shelter. But if I'm using my weapon, it's almost like I'm expending ammunition. So when I use this special ability, I'm going to lose this. So these will be persistent up here, but these will always be kind of coming in and coming out as I use them. Uh, sometimes you're going to be fighting other rabbits, and sometimes you're just using these things to get through cards that have combat or different challenges on them. Let me show you a few more. So you have Constance. Again, a mercenary gives you some nice colorful background. And then each rabbit has their own little advantages that they can do. When you land on one of those full blood spots, looks just like this. Uh, that's when uh, you're going to go flip one of these over. And these are going to lead to generally the challenges that are going to be pushing you along the way. And I think I'm going to try to set these down in here so I don't keep fighting my focus. And I'm going to move through these quick undead attack. There's literally, uh, for those that like zombies, you got kind of zombie rabbits that'll come in. So, and they got different art for each. An animal can attack. This is where you'd be rolling the challenge die. You've got weather. So if you've got your little shelter or a card that's going to give you shelter, it's going to keep you from having to do these things, which are going to send you back spaces. So thick fog, quick sand, you can lose a turn or lose one item or lose one card. Sorry. So you got dead ends. Again, there's some things like uh, uh, that'll keep you from, from being punished by a dead end. So your little items uh, are generally going to help you avoid all these little things that are going to come up. And right in line with the roll and move, these cards are very basic, very simple. They're going to tell you exactly what to do on them, and you'll do them. All right, the stronghold cards. Again, the art and everything's great. So this is going to happen when you land on one of those spaces that I think kind of just looks like rust or maybe it's little tiny bits of blood. You're going to get one of these. Um, I if I remember right, you start with three or four in your hand, and I'll just show you what some of these are. These are things that are going to help you uh, generally. So protection, um, literally you just play this and it's going to be a basic shelter that you're going to get uh, dug in. Uh, and you can see what it tells you to do or what it allows you to do. Uh, rope if you didn't have it. So, and then it even helps you out, tells you to play this card to avoid quicksands, dead ends, or mudslides, baby. All right, crosshairs. For, you gotta love the name. Okay, just the name alone. And I'm gonna tell you the the rich background story. They even got like a little novella in here on these uh, these little rabbits. It really endears me to them. I really like them. Now the trail-based game reinventing a genre, it's roll and move. I gotta admit, I was a little bit let down here. I actually expected more. Right from the get-go, they said this is basically roll and move and we're bringing it back because it's gonna have story. Um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I played life a lot as a kid. And one of the things I liked in life was everything was a little bit different. You know, what's your job gonna be? Did you go college path or did you go you know, trade path? Did you get married? 
uh, well, I, I think everybody gets married. How many kids do you have? What kind of kids do you have? And I got to tell you, I wish there was a little bit more of the things that are different in this. Once you get your main character, there on the board are the different things that you can do. But, you know, and, and I know there's a lot of characters, but... But at that point, it felt kind of scripted. And then I thought, oh, the paths, you know, there's going to be little side adventures. And then the side adventures, although they're different, you know, it was just, it was still roll and move. Now, again, uh, my son, he's almost eight. He liked it. I think it's a great kids game, but this game probably falls victim to me because I expected it to be a lot more. There was a part of me that thought this was going to actually take roll and move and make it super exciting. I didn't really find it super exciting. Um, so for me, I kind of hyped it uh, uh, maybe too much for myself. Uh, I really thought that the, the that these different stories would evolve. I think I almost pictured like Arabian Nights with a roll and move mechanic, yes, and then but a little bit more structure to the story. I knew it didn't have this huge book or anything, but I thought, okay, it's it's kind of like going to be a grown up life. I don't know with hares with little rabbits and they're battling. So, um, it, it's, it is a roll and move with a couple little twists on it, but not quite as many as I would have liked. So, um, you've seen the gameplay and, and the story is rich and they talk about other things to come. So I'm still very curious on that. And I'll leave you with that. I, it underwhelmed me simply because I think I, I actually thought, cool, roll and move is back. <laughs> it's not back yet. Sorry. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Boop. Boop.